Hi, in this video we are going to discuss the experiment physiology graphs, especially that of the frog's cardiogram. So how, how do we draw a normal cardiogram of the frog? So see this is the experimental setup while we record the normal cardiogram. So here you can see that this is a frog, we have dissected out the heart and we have suspended it on this starling's heart lever. Okay. So if you are going to magnify this view, it will be something like this. So see here you can see that the heart is held in an upside down position. That is why when the heart contracts, we are recording it as a downstroke because it will pull the lever downwards. Okay. Now we will just see the different parts of the heart or different chambers. So the first part one is the sinus venosus. So this is the sinus venosus and this is the pacemaker for the frog's heart. And then we've got the atria, then we've got the ventricles, and then we've got the bulbous arteriosus. So when we record the normal contraction of the frog's heart, we can see that there are all these components in that contraction. So this is a normal cardiogram of a frog's heart, wherein you can see that the downstroke is a systole and the upstroke is a diastole. Now the downstroke contains four components. See, you can see that there are four small waves here. All these indicate the different chambers of the frog's heart. So see, the first one uh, uh, it depicts the contraction of the sinus venosus. The second, the contraction of atria. Then the contraction of ventricles, and finally the contraction of the bulbous arteriosus. Now this is an ideal cardiogram, but actually the obtained graph is something like this, wherein you'll have just two waves here. The first for the contraction of sinus venosus and atria combined and the second one for the kind for the contraction of the ventricles and the bulbous arteriosus combined that is why we draw the graph with just two components and we start the graph with the systolic component and end with the diastolic component okay so that is a normal cardiogram the next experiment is the effect of warmth and cold on frog's beating heart so first we'll see the effect of warmth so when you draw the graph, you can first start with the normal cardiogram, starting with the systolic component first. Okay, then we'll draw the effect of warmth on sinus venosus. So you have to draw a graph like this. So see here, you can see that the heart rate has increased. Why is the heart rate increasing? See, sinus venosus is a pacemaker in case of frog's heart. So when warmth is applied on sinus venosus, the metabolic rate will increase and so the impulse rate will increase and thus the heart rate will increase. Now you can notice one more thing, the amplitude has decreased. Why? See when the heart rate increases, what happens is the filling time of the ventricles is reduced. So the end diastolic volume will also decrease, which means that the initial length of the muscle fiber decreases. So according to Starling's law, your force of contraction also decreases. That is why here the amplitude has decreased. See, force of contraction is depicted by the amplitude of that graph. So since the force of contraction is decreasing, we have drawn, uh, the recording shows a decrease in amplitude. So this decrease in amplitude is a secondary effect, whereas an increase in heart rate is a primary effect. Okay. So here you have to draw in such a way that the heart rate increases and the amplitude decreases. And then you can show the normal recordings again. And then show the effect of warmth on the ventricles. So here you can see that when the warmth was applied on the ventricles, the force of contraction is increased. So heart rate is normal, but the force of contraction is increased, which is depicted by these increased amplitude, which means that the force of contraction is determined by the ventricles, whereas heart rate is determined by the sinus venosus. Okay. So this is how we will show the effect of warmth. Now we will see the effect of cold. So first you can uh, depict the normal cardiogram and then we'll see the effect of cold on the sinus venosus. So here you can see that there's an increase in, there's a decrease in heart rate and an increase in amplitude. So why is there a decrease in heart rate? Because when there's cold on sinus venosus, the metabolic rate is decreased. So the impulse production will decrease and so the heart rate is re reduced. That is the primary effect. See, when the heart rate is reduced, there'll be more filling time for the ventricles. So there'll be more end diastolic volume. So according to the uh, Frank Starling's law, when there's more end diastolic volume, there is an increased initial length. So there'll be an increased force of contraction. So that is why here we've got an increased amplitude. As I said before, force of contraction is depicted by the amplitude. 
so the heart rate is decreased and amplitude has increased that is effect of cold on sinus venosus then we'll draw the normal cardiogram again and then we'll uh, see the effect of cold on the ventricles so here you can see that the heart rate is normal but the amplitude has decreased why when there's cold on the ventricles the metabolic rate is decreased and the force of contraction will decrease so that is why here we've got a decreased amplitude and then we'll draw the normal cardiogram again so see this is the effect of cold on sinus venosus and ventricles so from this graph we can see that the heart rate is determined by the sinus venosus and the force of contraction is determined by the ventricles our next experiment is stannius ligature so in this experiment we are going to tie ligatures between the different chambers of the heart and we are going to see the result okay so the first ligature is placed between the sinus venosus and the atria right and then uh, after tying the first ligature we'll record its effect and then we'll tie another ligature between the bulbous arterioles and the ventricles and after we position the second ligature also we'll take the recording so this is how we do the experiment of sinus ligature so we'll see how to draw the graph so first we'll start with a normal cardiogram and then we put on the first ligature which was between the sinus venosus and the atria so you can see that there's an initial pause after which the heart will start beating again at a slower rate okay and then we'll put on the second ligature and here also you can see that there is a pause and then the heart will start beating again at a much lower place okay so what is happening here is when the first ligature is applied the sinus venosus continues to beat as before but the atria and ventricles stop beating so that is why a straight line is recorded on the drum okay now after a while the atria takes its own rhythm and atria and ventricles starts contracting at a slow, slower rate so this is the atrial rhythm and for frog it is around 20 to 40 per minute now this is because of blockage of impulses from sinus venosus to atria right and then next we put on the second ligature so when the second ligature is applied the conduction of impulses from atria to ventricles is also blocked so that the heart stops for some time and then the ventricles will start contracting at a very slow rate now this is called the idioventricular rhythm and that is about 10 beats per minute right so this recording has only ventricular component that is why here you can see that there is an atrial component as well as a ventricular component but in case of idioventricular rhythm it will contain only the ventricular component right so from this we can prove that the sinus venosus the atria and ventricles each can contract at its own rhythm okay but sinus venosus is a pacemaker because the impulse production from there is more than that of the atria and the ventricles so this is the stannous ligature effect of stannous ligature now the questions that can be asked are can we perform this experiments on a mammalian heart if not why see in mammalian heart which is a pacemaker it is our sa node right now the sa node is situated on the posterior wall of the right atrium near the opening of the superior vena cava so the first ligature cannot be applied now the second ligature also cannot be applied as it occludes the coronary circulation so this experiment cannot be done on a mammalian heart now the other questions are what is the clinical significance see even though experimentally we cannot do this uh, experiment there are conditions which mimic this like for example heart block right in heart block also there is inhibition of transmission of impulses so that is the clinical significance of stannous ligature now the other questions that can be asked are uh, sinus venosus is a pacemaker of the heart prove it with suitable diagrams so when a such a question is asked also you have to draw this diagram of stannous ligature name another experiment to prove that sinus venosus is a pacemaker of the heart so another experiment is that of the effect of warmth and cold on sinus venosus right which we have di just discussed in that also we have seen that the heart rate is determined by the sinus venosus and the force of contraction by the ventricles so that is another experiment which helps us to prove that sinus venosus is a pacemaker now the ex next experiment is the effect of vagal stimulation on frog's heart so in this experiment we are going to stimulate the vagus nerve of the frog see you can see that you've got an electrode here which is going to stimulate the vagus nerve and then we're going to see the see the effect of vagal stimulation okay so the electrode will be placed under this vagus nerve here 
see this is the frog's heart and this is the vagus nerve so we're going to place an electrode under this vagus nerve and then stimulate it and see its effect okay so we can see that when after the normal cardiogram we are going to apply the stimulus so when the stimulus is applied after some time the heart will stop in diastole so that is known as vagal inhibition the inhibition of this uh, heart by vagus is known as vagal inhibition so that the heart stops in diastole and if the stimulus is continued we can see that even in spite of the uh, stimulation the heart will start beating at a slower rate which is the idioventricular rhythm which means this is the heart has escaped this vagal inhibition and that is known as vagal escape okay now once the stimulus is stopped we can see that there will be normal contractions again so this is the effect of vagal stimulation see when we stimulated the heart the heart stopped in diastole now that is known as vagal inhibition after some time the heart starts beating at its own rate which is known as the idioventricular rhythm and that is known as vagal escape once the stimulus is stopped there will be normal contractions again so this is the effect of vagal stimulation now the questions that can be asked are define vagal tone what are the causes of vagal inhibition and what are the causes of vagal escape okay now the next experiment is the refractory period of frog's heart so the aim of this experiment is to find out the refractory period or demonstrate the refractory period of the frog's beating heart so for this we stimulate the ventricles at different phases of the cardiac cycle and we want to see its effect so if this is a normal cardiogram we're going to stimulate it at different phases like during the systole and during the early part of diastole in both these cases we can see that there is absolutely no change and a normal cardiogram itself is recorded but when we stimulate during the later part of the diastole here you can see that there is another contraction superimposed on the normal one right and that there is a compensatory pause after this and then the next beat after this uh, uh, stimulus has got an increased amplitude and that is known as the post extra systolic potentiation right so when the second stimulus was applied during the relative refractory period or during the later part of the diastole it was seen that there was an extra contraction superimposed on the first one which is known as extra systole then there was a compensatory pause and the contraction after that had an increased amplitude and that is known as post extra systolic potentiation so when you draw this graph you have to make sure that this gap between the application of the stimulus and the next one is, in, is included in two cardiac cycles okay so the duration here should have two cardiac cycles so when you draw that you have to draw it in such a way now the questions that can be asked are can cardiac muscle be tetanized and explain so we already know about how long the cardiac the refractory period of a cardiac muscle is and its different phases the absolute refractory period and the relative refractory period so we have to say about that here and also you have to know the ionic basis of the long refractory period in cardiac muscle so these are the questions that can be asked so in this video we have discussed the normal cardiogram the effect of warmth and cold on sinus venosus and ventricles we have also seen the sinus ligature the effect of vagal stimulation as well as the we have demonstrated the refractory period okay so i hope these graphs are clear thank you